Hello YouTube, this is the GTA Show. Uh, a Boy and His Blob Review, episode 151, part 2. Today I'm reviewing A Boy and His Blob. Uh, this is the second part. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, go back and watch it. I covered quite a lot of the review already. Story, gameplay, controls, music, and some of the good about this game. Uh, so if you haven't watched part 1 yet, go back and watch it. Now let's pick a left off. I'm just talking about transformations. So let's keep going. Now, as I said before, my favorite transformation is definitely the giant walking death machine that I call Metal Gear Blob. Because <laughs> it can hover, it can jump, anything that touches you basically dies. Once you have this thing, nothing fucks with you. This is awesome. <laughs> you only get it in the final stages of the game, but it's well worth the wait. Out the way, bitches! <laughs> Another transformation I really liked was the um, shield transformation. On the final boss, you use you, to deflect. Um, Projectiles back at him is really useful. Uh, so yeah, the transformations in this game are really good, especially the giant walking robot. Okay, I'm back now, YouTube. I just wanted to show off a few more things. Uh, this is one of the bosses of the game. It's a giant. Cobra snake sort of thing. Um, this is the very first boss of the game. I won't be showing how to beat it because that's basically the entire game is a puzzle and you've got to sort of figure it out for yourself. Um, but basically, each boss has a certain way of defeating them. One thing that's really difficult about defeating each boss is that. The boy only has one health point, so basically once you get hit, you instantly die. That makes his game very difficult. Um, that's quite a lot of the bosses are very hard, but once you figure out their um, what beans you need to use, when and where, and after a few attempts, you'll eventually beat them. They are pretty difficult though, and they take quite a lot of patience, especially the boss with the Emperor where you try and drop, drop a brick on his head. <laughs> One of the best things about this game is definitely the unlimited continue system. If you die, the game will take you basically back to a checkpoint, which will be very close to where you died. Which is an absolute godsend because... This game is very hard and kind of frustrating at times. Um, throughout each level, you'll notice that there's three treasure chests on my map. Each level has three secret treasure chests. If you manage to find all three treasure chests, you get some... Um, a little bonus for your hideout. Example, some artwork pictures to look at, um, some videos to look at, that sort of thing. And it is quite a lot of fun to, to find all the secrets in each level. I have found all the secrets in, in the game and it is quite rewarding. And they're pretty hard to find, but not too hard. Most of the time, if you look carefully enough, you should be able to find everything. You probably won't need to go on the internet for a guide or something. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is the um, hideout. The hideout is basically the hub world. Throughout the game, there are four different hideouts. One's kind of like a treehouse. This is it. Uh, the second hideout's... Uh, um... A townhouse struck cave. 
I think it's the boy's house. It's quite good. The third hub world is this, um, the planet of Blobalonia, where the Blob lives. He gets to see all his family members and stuff. And and the final hub world is the um, Emperor's Castle, which is a kind of creepy, I suppose. I'll just show you off a bit. One of these artwork things. This is how they drew the um, boy and did all the designs for him. So that's the, some of the things that you can get if you manage to collect all the treasure chests in certain levels. Also, if you collect all the treasure chests, treasure chests in a certain level, you can also unlock puzzle levels, which are also quite good, but they do require a lot more thinking than the average story level. They can be rather confusing at times. But that's basically all good stuff I can think of, you two. So let's go to the bad stuff. Okay. Uh, now, my complaints about a boy and his blob for the Nintendo Wii. I don't really have that many complaints, because this, this is a very good solid game. I definitely got my money's worth. I only found two complaints in the game. Um, my first complaint is, when I was playing some of the later levels, I found some weird glitches that I can't really believe they were left in the game. I found one level towards the end where I fell off a platform the blob was doing the falling animation, and the boy was walking on an invisible platform, and he wouldn't die, which was weird because I'd just basically fallen into a bottomless pit. Uh, the second glitch I found in one level, I kept pressing the X button, and the blob wouldn't come back to me. Um, I have no idea why these glitches happen and how they happen, but. If you reset the game, you can. They usually don't happen again. But they were a little bit weird. The other complaint about the game I have, there is only one save file. So, if you want to, um, say, play the game through twice, you'll probably have to copy the data onto your memory card and um, keep your best file on your memory card and keep your other file on your Nintendo Wii's hard drive. Um, but other than that, a Boy and His Blob is a very good puzzle game, and I had a lot of fun playing it. So I give this game a well-deserved 4 out of 5. My next review will be Sin and Punishment for the Nintendo 64 on the Wii Virtual Console. But I ain't got time for that today, so I'll see you then. Bye!